Well, that was a lot of fun. Now we're heading into the kitchen. A lot of fun stuff in here. I think this is going to be a little bit easier. It's going to move a little bit faster and I think we're going to get more satisfying results. The kitchen being a smaller room, it's um, you know, a lot less hassle to shoot, a lot faster to shoot. And in my opinion, uh, like I said, I think the images are a lot prettier. So let's have at it. All right, I'm going to try and go through at least two of these. We're going to have to move a little fast. So I'm assuming you already know how to do a basic edit on an image. So this is a basic image edit. We've got blown out windows. That's fine. I can live with that. But the main body of our image looks really good. So this is a good base image. That's where we're starting. I decided I didn't really need the underexposure. I really liked the main image. I thought that had pretty much everything I needed except for the window. So I did take the window pull. I brought the yellow up a little bit in that so that I'd have that golden kind of look through the windows. And I did bring the highlights down so that we didn't have too blown out of highlights. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the shadows a little bit. It's okay if those go a little bright. I mean, again, it's outside, it's supposed to be bright. And then our only other part of this image is gonna be this flash, which again, we've kind of cleaned up and made look good. And then an exact copy of it with the flash in the window so that those two are exactly the same, so that they're going to be able to, well, essentially, the one is going to cover the flash that we see in the picture in the other image. So that's how that works. All right, so I'm gonna take my four images, the flash in the window image, the full flash image, the window pull, and the base image, and I'm gonna send them over to Photoshop. And then this will line them all up as layers. The way I set them all up, well, first thing is to align all the layers. I have a shortcut F2, which will align all the layers. There is a command that does it. I don't have a clue what it is. These are essentially the reverse order too that I want them in. So I take the top layer, which is my ambient layer, and I take that all the way to the bottom. That's where I want that, all the way at the bottom. I do want the window pull at the very top, but I don't really want to see it right now. Um, and then I'll take these two flash images and eventually I'm going to want to treat them as if they are a single image, but I'm going to want to edit them separately. So what I'll do is I'll put them into a folder and now for all intents and purposes, I can mask them as a single unit and yet edit the two of them separately. So I'll put a white mask on that so I can mask that. Let's open it and we'll put a black mask hiding the full flash layer. And so now all we're seeing is the flash in the window layer, which is exactly what I want. Now I'll just take a white paintbrush and paint out the flash right there and a little bit of the flash attributes that are a little too bright for, it to work, for me to work with. I'm also seeing right here, notice when I was putting that in, it's not going to matter a whole lot, but if you're not doing a window pull, you can see a flash in the background coming through. So I hit X. So what that did, that reversed black and white. So now I'm painting in black. I'm making my brush smaller. And now I'm taking that flash in the window out from the flash that was behind us. So that's just kind of cleaning that all up so that you could use that image the way it sits if you need to. Now we're gonna combine the flash layer with the ambient layer. And we do that by, again, treating this group as if it were a single image. And we can take that down to, you know, in the 70s to 80s. So right about in there looks pretty darn good. Using a black brush with a very low, low, low flow. My flow is at 60, I'm taking it down to 15-ish. And now I just start trying to paint out anything that looks super, super flashy. And by doing this, we're bringing in 
more and more of the, the, the ambient layers so we get more and more of a natural look. I just noticed two things. One, as I told you in the last lesson, I don't like trash cans and the trash can finally did get pulled out in this shot. But also over here, I don't know if you saw it, but um, here, I'll reverse out of it. Yeah, my flash was in there. Not a good thing. So let's just take that thing out. And we get it most of the way out. We're not getting it all the way out because our opacity is set to 79%. But it's close enough to being out that we can fix that. But by and large, that looks pretty good. And you know, I almost would leave this as a window pull, but the window pull is gonna be so darn easy. Again, we have just squares. Squares are easy to cut. So let's just cut those in. I zoom in so that I get a good cut. That's a little too bright for me. That's a little too dark for me. So I'm going to kind of bring that opacity down just for, this is just for cutting the mat out so that I can see exactly where I want to cut it. So we're going to start there and we're just going to do straight lines because that's all we need to do. And like I said, let's make this fast. I will go around this because that really doesn't slow me down any. Down here, see we've got that nice black, um, I guess it's some sort of insulation or something and we, we can hide our mat line right in there. Anytime you can hide a mat line in a black part of the window frame, um, it's best to do so. That's a great place to hide your lines. So we'll start here on the cabinet, go up. See, there's a darker line right there. And then there's that insulation or whatever it is, that felt, you know, that's around windows. It's right there. And we're just gonna cut right along in there, cut around there, and double click. This is the only hard part about this whole thing is right here, this faucet. And you know what? It's not that hard at all. You just take it slow. I'm going to be a little sloppy. I would be a little cleaner for a real picture and get it really quickly and still make it look pretty good. There we go. And then all we have to do, oh, did I mention every time you start a new clip, you need to press the shift button. I'm sorry, that's really important that you know that. If you don't press shift, your new clip will override the old clip and you'll only have one clip. By pressing shift, you can add to what you've already selected. Now, if you hold option or I believe alt on a PC, you can reverse that. Here, I'll hold the option. Now see how we've got a minus sign there? That means we could take something out. So we could have, control Z undoes what I did. We could have just selected this whole window like that. And then I could have Alt, press the Alt button and just subtracted this like this. And I'm going to just do this again. Pressing that Option or Alt button is great because it reverses any button in Photoshop. So if you're using, let's say, the Sharpen tool, if you press that Alt button, it becomes the Blur tool. Did you know that? Just about anything, it'll reverse it. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and we hit the mask button and that will make a mask with the selections that we've just selected. Selections we just selected, is that English? Okay, I'm a photographer, not an English professor. That's probably not a bad pull there at 63%. Let's bring it up so you can see it all the way. It's a little too strong, but I think there's 70. I think that looks really, really good. And I think that whole thing has a very natural feel to it. There's problems, I see them. Don't worry, don't get ahead of me now. Don't get ahead of me. We've still got multiple layers here. See that? We've got multiple layers. If I was to correct things, I need everything down to a single layer. And we're not quite there yet. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna turn it into a single layer by sending it back to Lightroom. So I just hit Command S, save, and it saves it. 
and shoots it right back into Lightroom. And let's close that because we don't want that hanging out in Photoshop. That'll screw us up when we come back to Photoshop because yes, we do two round trips. All right, here is our edited. Now this is really important. Everybody gets screamed out on Facebook and on the forums and all that because your verticals aren't vertical. This is how you do it. You go into, I think it's geometry. Where is it? Transform, sorry. It was geometry, wasn't it? I don't know. Anyway, um, so in here, you can hit auto and that generally works, but sometimes, sometimes it makes some really bad decisions. I'm not sure if it made a good decision here or not. I'm going to go to guided. Guided is my old faithful. And with this, you can draw lines on objects that are vertical or should be vertical in your picture. And it'll snap the picture to be vertical to those. I've found that it works best when you can get those lines as far apart on the frame as possible. When they're too close to the center, it's not working with enough area to, to get a good true vertical. So get them as far apart as you can. That doesn't always mean on both sides. You can't always do that, but try. Also too, you want as long a line as possible. If you're doing it on too short a line, you may not have enough information to get a good vertical. So try and get as long a line as you can. So as I'm looking at this, I've already picked out my lines. I think our best vertical that's far right is this line, this seam down the refrigerator. I could also use this very barely visible wall line right there but I'm gonna use the, the refrigerator instead. For our opposite line, I'm going to use the uh, door frame on the sliding glass window. So here's what you do. You go to the top, you align it right where black meets white right there. Hit your bu um, mouse button, drag it all the way down and find a matching place at the bottom and let go. There, we've got our right. Now let's do our left. Click, hold, Bring it all the way down, let go. Now we've got verticals. Now another thing you may or may not have seen in there was um, there's definitely chromatic aberration. Say that three times fast. Let's zoom in and I'll show it to you. What it is is if you look real close right there, you'll see a purplish red. And on the corresponding other side, but actually I see it right here, is a green. You can see it really strong right there too. So let's try and correct that. We do that by going over here into lens correction. We go into manual chromatic aberration fixie e e thing. Um, you want to do this as little as possible or for as narrow uh, uh, a spectrum of color as you possibly can. So what I do is I usually start big and then bring my constraints down until it comes back again and make it as small as possible. So my eyes are on this purple right there and that's what I'm looking at. So I'm going to take this all the way into the red so that we're, we're getting a good Actually, I guess that's purple and magenta, probably. Now we start to bring our defringe amount up till we see that disappear. And there it's gone. See, it's back and it's gone there. Now I'm going to take the, the blue slider and move it towards the center till I see it come back again. Oh, there it is. It's gone right there. Now I'll take the opposite slider and move that in and it comes back there, so back it out a little bit, and there we go. That's a pretty big range. I don't like that, but that's what we're getting. I am not seeing a, okay, there is some green there, but it's really hard to see because of the green of the leaves behind it. When in doubt, you can be pretty positively assured that whatever you've got on the purple side, you're gonna have on the green side. So I just, you know, get them all lined up and that should clean up our chromatic aberration. I also saw some when I was drawing here, 
let me just see if I can make that. Yeah, see, see it right along the edge of the, the refrigerator. So I needed a little bit more gone there and that does it. So I'll go ahead and make that same adjustment here. And that is good. We are making adjustments essentially to a single image now. All those layers that we had before have been compressed and become a single image. As I've shown you in other videos, you can go back and edit those original images um, by doing the trick that I showed you. Here, we're just gonna take this now fixed image back to Photoshop and do our Photoshop finishing there. I just right click on it, edit in, edit in Photoshop, edit with Lightroom adjustments and off it goes. That looks good, that looks clean. Okay, I said I saw some problems. I would like to take these marks out, but ethically, I don't think that is a go. So we're not going to. I didn't know what that was. That looks like just bad carpentry. I did see something right here, and that is my flash reflected. So let's get rid of that. There's a couple of ways to do that. I'll do the top part the hard way, and I'll do the bottom part the easy way, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use our clone stamp tool. Is that what that is? I just use them. I don't know what they're called. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna copy this area and just bring it down into here. And okay, you can see it's not quite lining up because I am I did it bad. Let's line that up so it lines up a little better. And let's see, there we go. And, and you can see I screwed up that chair in the process of doing this too. Nobody knows that that chair is there or not there. So you know what we're just gonna do? We're just gonna blow the dang chair out completely and nobody will know. It doesn't matter. That's not material to the, the home. There we go. Now, if we were really going crazy, we could come up here and take all these marks out here. Do that on high-end stuff, on interior design stuff. We take all that stuff out. On this house, no. We still have that here too. Let's try another way to get rid of that. And that's our remove tool. I knew the name of that one because I use it all the time. I don't like it too big because I don't like it to cover more than I'm taking out, but there we go. And that should, yeah, I knew that would just go. And we're also going to take out this reflection of the bulbous there. And that's just beautiful too. Not quite sure what that is, but I don't like it. So I'm taking it out. We can take that out. These reflections, that one's pretty strong. I'm gonna take that out and that one out and that one out. Those don't materially affect the, the house, so I don't feel bad about that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Boy, I wish I could take those out. I'm gonna take that smudge out just because I can. I don't think that's that big a deal. I just like to clean things up a little bit. There's a reflection here I don't really like, so I'm gonna take that out. And now we should have a very clean looking image. Um, that looks really good. Our next step, oh, let's take that reflection out too. Our next step is my little secret tools. Well, first I'm going to make another layer I like to do layers every now and then when I do new things to the image so that I don't lose where I'm at. So my next thing is to denoise and to add a little bit of sharpening. I think especially the chair backs are gonna benefit a lot with a little bit of sharpening. It's just gonna make it pop a little more. As I said in the last one, Sharpen AI automatically goes to the subject. I change it to all, but then I take the strength down to below 20 so that it's not hitting you over the face and gagging you with it. 
but it's just nice and mellow. You know, it looks good. And I think that looks really good. So another new layer. And we're going to pop it over into the Nick collections. I do like the Nicks. I like me some Nicks. Pro Contrast, yeah, that's the one I want. Oh, it's already there. Why am I so dumb? So I, I use the correct contrast. And this is all by eye. This is different on every picture. I just pull these up till it starts to look rich to me. And to me, this image looks very, very rich. And then the only other thing I would do is darken like light and center. And I love that one a lot too. And I put the light and center deep into the picture because light, lighter things draw the eye, draws you in. And we wanna bring people into the picture and keep them in the picture. So I think ideally we wanna put the lightest place right in that window. That's where I think, that's where I think the eye should go to here. And you can see we've got a little bit, it's a little bit too strong on the border darkening. So we're gonna bring that up a little bit. The other thing putting that light and center in that window does is it mimics the real light here. The light is coming from that window. So that should be the lightest place. We might even bring that up a little bit to emphasize that. And there. And now I think we have an extremely natural looking, not flashy at all, image. And I think that's a really good image. So let's send it back to Lightroom. So that's Command S again. Remember that? We did that before. There will be a test. You better know that. Okay, close out of that. Go into Lightroom. And last thing is our crop. And I like to I like to do it here and I don't think we need as much of that screen door as as is showing. I don't want to go down so far that I'm cutting off the light. So I think that looks really good. And now I'm getting a PowerPoint right in here and I'm liking that. Um, and then obviously I don't like that wall on the left. So let's just bring that in a little bit. There we go. Let's bring the, the left in a little bit. And I think that all lines up really, really nicely and shows the image the way I want it. Let's see what happens if we bring up a little bit from the bottom. Because we don't need to see the bottoms of all those chairs. We see the bottom of one. That's all we need to see. There we go. I think that looks really good. All right. There is our finished image. Super, super happy with that. Yeah. All right, let's go on. I'm going to skip over to the single point perspective image. And I'm doing this because I really want to show you a few editing tricks that are key to making your single point perspectives work. And they're exclusive to single point. You don't do this in editing other images. All right, so here is our base image. Again, we've just edited it and gotten it to the place where it looks good. Nothing outstanding, nothing bad. Everything looks really good. I have made some adjustments in the color mixer and taken out a lot of the color contamination that was coming in the window, getting rid of the greens. And then we were also getting a lot of yellows back in here. I think that was from the, the floor. I didn't want to take out too much because it was sucking color out of the actual image itself. So I stopped where I did, kind of halfway. So we've still got some discoloration. I'm still seeing some green here, and I'm still seeing some yellow and green back there. But I didn't want to take too much out and ruin the rest of the picture. So anyway, that is a good image, and we're going to use that. And then this, why did I make a copy of it? I made a copy of it, and I do not see why it looks exactly the same to me. So we're gonna pretend I didn't do that. All right, our next image is the low exposure. And I've made some adjustments here, 
but the white is not quite right. You can see going from here to here, it gets a lot bluer. So how do we fix that? We go to here and we see 4490 and plus 41. So we go to here and we change that 4490, 41, is that right? Uh, no, that right? Let's see. Yep, that is right. Now we've matched our color. The color is a little bit more dense because the contrast is deeper. So we get a little bit more saturation. Let's see, is the saturate? Yeah, saturation slider is exactly the same, but the colors are more saturated because the contrast is deeper. Contrast adds saturation or adds apparent saturation. So we might want to back that saturation off just a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. The reason I'm I'm wanting this is this is going to be my base image. And I'm going to build the lighter one on top of it because I want to keep some darkness on the right hand side. Because I want the light to go on the left side to bright to softer on the right hand side. So I kind of have to make that. Here I was, are overexposed, and that is obviously way wrong. So we're going to go back to our base exposure just to reset Lightroom. So the last image is that image. And then we're going to go to the overexposed and hit previous. That's why. So now it's copied over all the white balance information and all that. And I, I want to bring it down to right about in there. And I'm going to bring in a little bit more black. What I'm looking at is the area around the sink. I want that exceptionally bright, but not blown out. I want to be able to read that. And I think that looks really good. Here's our first flash. And that's a little bit dark. So let's bring that up. Notice that back room I told you we were having color problems back there. We do do a flash back there, so we'll be able to fix that. I'm also seeing discoloration right here. We're getting greens in there. Because that's a gray cabinet, it is it should not have a color tint to it. So I can just cheat and go into Color Mixer, come over here and just pull the saturation down, and it'll pick the correct colors to bring down. And I was way off. It was blue and aqua. But there we go, that's color corrected now. That next light, yeah, we're just not going to use that one. And then here's an, another flash. Now we've got our flash in the back room. So see back here? So now we want to color correct for back in there. So I'm just going to take the, the white temperature dropper thing -er -er and go back in there and find a white that I like. See, it's still looking yellow to my eye, even though I'm white balancing off of that, that looks yellow to me. I'm going to grab this and see if I can just suck color out of that. So this flash level will only be for that. I don't care that all this is getting all kaflooied. All I'm worried about is back there. Bring the highlights down a little bit. All right, that looks good. And that is it. So let's send all our images over to Lightroom. By the way, you see my little cameo right there? I think in when I was shooting this, I told you every single time you should straight on to the stove and the micro, you're going to be in the micro. It always happens. All right, let's align. And they lined up pretty good, I must say. All right, let's get them in the order that I want. I want them from dark to light. So there's the darkest, there's the medium. Pull those down, and then here's the lightest, and I'll pull that down on top of it. Then these two go happily into the flash group 
and we'll put the back room on top and now let's cut that in just cut it around here and again you know we've got a lot of good straight lines which are easy to cut to so why not and then I'm just going to go straight across here. That can be messy. I think in the living room I showed you, you know, we'll just use a very soft blur tool and we'll blur that. And that should do it. All right. Make a mask. There we go. There we go. We've got all our flashes all on one layer. And then I'm going to put a white mask on that. And then I'm turning it off so I can see my ambient layers. And I'm going to put black on those. So we'll start here. Now let's start building up our light. We want probably most of this room to be in the, in the medium area like that. I'm leaving the right-hand wall alone, but I'm bringing all the rest of this in. All right, now we're going to the highlight. Keep in mind, that looked really, really bad, didn't it? Well, we're not going to bring it in all that thick. but We are going to start here and see how we get a glow around the sink. That looks really good. And then I'm just looking now at the darker areas that I want to see, like right in there. I want to see those. Let's go ahead and just pop a little in there. It's not going to hurt it. There we go. And a little right in there. And a little back in there. All right, that looks pretty good. Just to show you, that's the highlights that I put in. Does that look pretty even? All right, let's bring that. Oh, I never fixed this. Let's do that. Hide that line. There we go. That looks good. Well, I continued on and did a few other things, like taking the flash out of the window, which really took no time at all. I did some other minor corrections and all that. This video was getting awfully long. I really wanted to get to the point of this video, which was to show you how to really make a single point perspective shot pop in editing. So let's go in and here is our image. And we are going to draw our guided lines just like normal. I think it's pretty easy to spot this line right here on the right as being our right line. And we're just going to use this cabinet here on the left. I prefer a line that goes top to bottom, but cabinets are generally one of the things you can trust the most as being straight. Unfortunately, as you can see from this opening, it's kind of broad there and then it, it tightens up and then it gets broader down here. So it's bending in and out. I'm going to go with this side being straight and we're gonna go with that. And I do see chromatic aberration there, so we will have to correct for that. But we already went over that, so I'm not gonna show that. Just getting this cabinet on the left and that straightens that up. Now, here's what you do different with a single point perspective shot. You do the same thing, but you do horizontals at top and bottom to get the same effect. Obviously, our best top line would be this right through there. And see how that brought that up? Our bottom line, if we did this right and we shot 24, 24 tilt shift, I think, on this. So we should be able to do these two all the way across, and they should line up. And there we go. Now that is how you line up a single point perspective shot so that everything is square to the camera. It needs to look just perfectly 
square to both the verticals and the horizontals. And that's something that you have to do with your single point perspective shots. I do like this with our tilt to the right. I think we're showing more of the room and yet we're, we're still centered on that, that stove, which is the important part of the room. So I think this was a really good use of a tilt shift and a single point perspective. And I think it was very important that we backed up so that we got the front of these cabinets and we weren't just shooting the counters as flat objects or aircraft carriers as we like to call them. So from here, I did chromatic aberration fixing, sent it back in, did our regular denoise, a little light sharpen, and popped in some nick and finished it all up. And this is what it ended up looking like. Pretty happy with the shot. You know, now that this is done, I think this video is finally to an end. I appreciate you sticking through. I hope you learned something and may your next shoot be your best shoot.